Hey coding lovers and welcome back to this tutorial series of UI table views. Alright today what I'm going to teach you is how to insert cells, delete cells, and reload cells in a table view. So let's get started. So we have our table view controller selected. So let's go to editor, embed in, navigation controller. Perfect. That's all we need to do within the storyboard at this time. So let's head over to the table view controller that's with file. As you can see this is all the code from the first episode in this tutorial so go check that out if you haven't yet. And let's get started. So we're going to want to add two methods here, which are IB actions. We're going to name them add item. And we're going to name we're going to create another function called remove item. So what the add item is going to do is it's going to take a new object insert it into the objects array, and then insert it into the table view. Let's see how that's done. So let's make a new variable, let new item equals a new item, because we know there's that the array up here is a array of strings. And then we're going to go objects.insert, we want to insert the new item that we just created at the index zero. Then we want to make a let the new index path equal index path object, We'll use this row and section parameters. We want it to be at the first row in the first section. And then we just call this simple method on table view called insert rows at index path. And we give it our index path. And there you have it. Perfect. So let's go through it again. We create a new item here. We insert it at the first index in our objects array. We then create the index path at the row zero in section zero, and then we just insert it into our table view here. To test this, we're going to take, since we added that navigation controller back at the storyboard, now we have a navigation item on our view stack. So we can take, we can add to our left bar button item, a simple button to let us do our action. We'll use this handy dandy bar button system item, where we have some predefined system actions, so we can do dot add, the target is self and the selector is add item. Perfect. Now let's, if we run this, what do you think is going to happen? I think what's going to happen is we're going to insert this new item at the first index path, which means we should see a new item above hello zero. There it is. And we could do multiples. Perfect, right? But what if we want to delete these? All right, well, let's go back into our code and fill out our remove item function. So what we want to do for remove item is make sure the array is not empty when we try to access the elements. So we'll do this handy Swift statement, guard objects that is empty. Let's return. We want to make sure that it's not empty. So what this statement says is, hey, if the object is not empty, continue. If not, if it's empty, return and don't do anything. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to remove the item at index path zero, and then we want to create another index path. So we can actually go above here and copy and paste it for ease, ease of use. And then we can do table view dot delete rows at index path and set it with an animation of automatic. Now we want to take our navigation item and set our right bar button item this time, so now the right item on the navigation bar, and set it to the type of trash can. Self is the target, and selector will now be remove item. So now if we run this, we can insert our items like we did before, and now we can hit this trash can, and it removes all the items at index zero as they move up. If I were to go through all of this and go all the way down to hello at 49, now we expect it's going to delete it, right? Of course. But if I hit it again, if I didn't have that guard statement, the app would crash because it's trying to access an element that doesn't exist any longer. So good thing we have those checks in there. Now the last thing we want to do is if we click on a cell, we want it to change its text. So to do that, we're going to implement a delegate method, did select row and index path. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the cell, so we're going to go let cell equals table view dot cell for row and index path, row with the index path. 
that we have in this delegate that comes from this delegate method. If we don't get a cell at that index path, well, something went wrong, so let's just return. Then we want to change the text. So we want to change text label dot text equals I have changed. And table view dot reload rows at the index path with type automatic. And we want to make sure we use the override keyword because this is a subclass in UI table view controller. So we have to use the override key. So if I run this now, you're going to see something a little odd. When I click on hello4 here, you'll see that it's going to say I have changed very quickly and then go back to hello4. That's not what we wanted. So does anyone know what's going on here? You might know. Well, what's happening is we're not changing the object's string within the array, which is how our data is populated, found in the cell for row at index path. So what we have to do is we have to do objects at the index path dot row, so at that index, and change it to I have changed. And instead of duplicating the string, we will just make a nice string variable. Let's name it new string. And then set everything as so. And now when I click around, you'll see I have changed it is everywhere. Awesome. I hope this helps you with your progression on learning about UI table views. And I hope you can subscribe because I'm going to put out lots of videos on UI table views, get into UI collection views, and tons of iOS related stuff that pretty much build your fundamentals to get you building full iOS applications and making money of your own someday. So please subscribe and check out my other videos. Thank you.